Hey everybody, so I've got Facebook up here and Instagram on here, so I'm going to try to talk to both of y'all. Happy Wednesday, I think. I've lost track of uh, the days when you work from home. That's the problem. <laughs> Not complaining though. So, um, a lot of people recently have just been asking me, like, how do you stay on track with your goals? I know you're setting new goals for 2018. And... This may be just like an understood thing, like so many people do it, but I have a vision board. I'm a firm believer that you have to keep your goals in front of you all the time. I know um, in the past when, you know, before I was a mom, like I had my planner, I wrote everything down, which I still do, but I felt like it was easier to stay on task um, before we had our daughter. And now since she's been born, she's almost four. Um, if I have any parents on here, you, I know you can probably relate sometimes with kids, like life just happens and you think a month goes by and you're like, crap, I was going to do that. Um, so I'm just a firm believer that you have to keep your goals in front of you all the time so that, you know, if you have a sick kiddo or a family member or something's going on, um, that's fine. Like that's totally a reason to give that your attention. But as soon as that's over, taken care of, that person gets well, whatever is going on, like you can refocus immediately. And that's what a vision board is great for. So I actually, I made one, um, I believe New Year's Eve or soon after, like it was that week that New Year started. And I just wanted to share a few things on my vision board with y'all um, because I've had a few people ask me for inspiration, like how do you even start one? Um, what do you put on yours? So let me grab mine. So here it is. So it's real pretty. So first off, I just wanted to have something pretty to look at. Um, I love the color teal. Um, it makes me happy. So that's kind of what I went with. So I'm going to share just a few things with y'all. Um, number one, so I got a Strong Fitness magazine. I am a subscriber to them. And I cut out a lot of motivational words. Like they were great for this. So Number one with fitness, I put progress, not perfection. So I know like since I work in the fitness industry, this is, you know, pretty common. But I know like when I was doing fitness competitions and competing, there was a lot of pressure to not miss a workout. You're going to be on stage. You're going to be compared to other people. Um, and, and there can be stress that comes along with that if you have something that comes up in life, right? Um and when I was competing, I was also in graduate school and working full time. So it was, there were times when it was pretty stressful, but I love fitness. And the whole reason I get back to the whole reason I even started um, back when I wanted to lose 50 pounds, I just wanted to feel good, right? Sorry, I had to correct that on Instagram. I just wanted to feel good. I wanted to feel energetic. I wanted to be the best version of me possible. And I think that's what fitness is all about. So if you find yourself getting stressed out about fitness or that you had to miss a workout because of X, Y, Z, just go back to why you started. And it's probably because you just want to feel better. You want to have more energy. Looks is icing on the cake, right? That comes along with it. But just get back to why you started and don't put pressure on yourself to look like anyone on social media or to look like anyone you know, you know, if you know someone at the gym that's super fit, like chances are y'all do not have the same schedule or the same life even. So don't compare yourself. Just say, I want to be the best version of me. So I put progress, not perfection, because every day I want to be a better version of myself um, than, uh, than what I was yesterday. So... Um, if you have followed me for any amount of time, you know that my husband and I are on our get debt free journey. And yes, that includes our mortgage. We are working hard. Our original goal was to be debt free by the time he's 40 and he's 37. He just turned 37. Sorry, kid. I'm telling your age. But, um, so we are, we are working hard. Uh, we'll see if we'll make it. I'm going to be optimistic and say we're going to make it. Um, we have followed the Dave Ramsey plan for years. Last um, New Year's, we even did um, the Financial Peace University class at a local church, and it was awesome. So I have debt-free and no credit cards. I don't want any credit card debt. I've done that for too long, 
Um, I hate owing anyone. And that even includes like, you know, the things where you're like, oh, I need some new furniture. Okay, let me do this interest-free thing for five years. No, I don't want to owe anyone. So um, I have debt-free, no credit cards online. Um, I also I have this quote. It says, to keep the body in good health is a duty. Otherwise, we will not be able to keep our mind strong and clear. And so I totally agree with that. I love that quote. In fact, you know, I know a lot of really fit people, but when you are stressed out about money, if you're stressed out about whatever you have going on if it, um, in life, the things that stress you out, you're not completely healthy and well. Like wellness is an overall thing. Stress can be a silent killer. It can elevate your cortisol levels, which can make it hard for you to lose weight in the first place. Um, it can um, raise your blood pressure. So I'm just anti-stress. <laughs> Um, I know it's inevitable, like you're going to have stress at some points in your life, you're going to have things that happen to you, but it's how you deal with them, like what are your practices, do you meditate, do you pray, do you work out, I am all about turning that stress into a positive and dealing with it in a positive way versus numbing it, you know, like drinking alcohol, going to happy hour, those things just numb it, you're not dealing with it, you're not... Um, embracing it you're just numbing it for a little while but guess what it's there the next day so how are you going to deal with it every day in a positive way so um get your mind your body strong and clear be clear on your goals have a plan and work that plan um i know personally like with my blog i want to add more value to y'all i want to give y'all information and go back to like where I started, what would I have wanted to know when I first started and provide y'all with that kind of free content. Um, I want to make sure I'm in church more and raise Brinkley that way. I know not everyone believes that and that's okay, but that's just a personal goal of mine. Um, I want to vacation more, so I'm just embarrassed to say this, but it's been like six years since Kent and I have gone on a family vacation together so we've been on plenty of trips with our business we've done things with fitness like don't get me wrong I'm super grateful um, for all of the opportunities that I've had with our health and wellness business with isogenics with um, fitness I've done some awesome photo shoots I've traveled I've worked with some awesome photographers I've even I was able to go to Canada a few years ago and shoot with oxygen oxygen magazine when they were there um, so I've done some pretty amazing things, but it's been like six years since Kent and I took an actual vacation. So that's definitely on my vision board, somewhere tropical, sunny, and gorgeous with no responsibility. That's on my vision board. <laughs> um, so we haven't decided if we're taking Brinkley. I think we would like to do a couple's vacation and then a family vacation, but that's definitely on my vision board to save up for that. Um... I have laptop lifestyle design your life because I'm super passionate about helping people create freedom in their day and to own their time. And I love helping um, entrepreneur minded people build um, businesses from their smartphones in the pockets of their day. I'm super passionate about that. I've been doing that for three years and I love it, love it, love it. It's like no other career out there. Um, I always want to be a product of the product. Um, so, you know, with our health and wellness company, with my fitness business, I want to be in great shape. I want to be a product of the product year round. I know like over the last year or so, I've had, you know, health issues related to the breast implants I had. If you're just hearing about this, there's a post uh, lower, uh, lower down on my um, Facebook page that talks about that. But I just want to feel my best year round and show other people that they can too. And um, so that's something that I personally have on my vision board is just to stay active and mainly so I can keep up with my daughter because she is nonstop. <laughs> if you know her, you know she's nonstop. <laughs> so um, let's see. Of course, I want to uh, get my daughter involved in activities as soon as she you know, is old enough to choose what she wants to do. She's 
like I said, really active. So I don't know if she's going to be in dance or more in karate or soccer. She's super strong and super stout and very muscular. So we're going to probably get her involved in a thing or two pretty soon. Um, I have tithe 10%. Um, I know in the Bible it says that you should, you should tithe 10%. I am a huge giver, y'all. My husband could tell you, like, I I love to give. That's my love language. And so, you know, sometimes your mission calls you to circulate more money. So, um, this is like a whole nother video in itself. But what is your story around money? Were you taught that money is the root of all evil? Were you taught that money doesn't grow on trees, so you grew up in a scarcity mindset? You know, I have to be honest, like I grew up in a household that, you know, my dad would say, well, money doesn't grow on trees. And now, you know, since I've become an entrepreneur and surrounded myself with other entrepreneurs who do live in abundance, I've learned that, no, money is not evil. If you're a, if you're a giving person and you make a lot of money, like, you're going to be a bigger whatever you were in the first place. So if you're a giver, you're going to want to give more. You're just going to be able to give on a bigger level. And so if you think about all the things in our world that really make a difference, like schools, um, churches, nonprofit organizations, all these things take money. Where do you think that money comes from? Probably very giving people or a lot of people that give a little but chances are, if it's something big that really makes a difference in the world, it required people that were big investors. And so anything that you could want to do in, in the world that would make a difference requires money. So sometimes you need to rewrite your money story, which I'm super passionate about. I've been doing that um, inner work for the last few years. But what is your money story? Sometimes if you're called with a bigger vision that you want to make a huge difference in the world, that vision or that mission is going to cause you, call you to circulate more money and you're just going to have to make more money and you have to be okay with that and know that you're worthy of it. So if your old money story is not rewarding, rewrite it. You might have to do some inner work. Um, I need to do a blog post on this, but a couple of my favorite books for that is Secrets of a Millionaire Mind by T. Harv Ecker, and I'm reading one by Napoleon Hill right now that's called Think and Grow Rich. It's pretty awesome. Um, but again, like rich is a mindset. So what are the things that you want? Like um, money can't necessarily buy you happiness, but can buy you opportunity, opportunity to make a difference in the world, um, you know, create experiences for your family, whatever you want. So Anyways, I just, I love reading about stuff like that. I'm super passionate about it. Um, I want to create some e-courses in 2018 for y'all. I'm super excited about that. I'm not going to give away too much info on it, but I, that is definitely in the works. I'm completing a fitness nutrition course right now, which will give me a special specialization in fitness nutrition. I'm learning all about macros, all about how the body works with food. It's, it's a lot of what I've learned over the last probably eight years, but it's diving deeper. These are just things on my vision board. Like, I'm not saying that you need to do any of this, but these are just things um, that are on my vision board. And then I have this gorgeous house, if you can see it. Um, I've always dreamed of having a house with a view. Like either a view from um, of the water like my dad has, like my grandpa had, or just of the countryside. And this is a picture of a gorgeous home in Texas, which is where I live, the Texas Hill Country. And um, that's on my vision board for the future. So anyways, those are, those are just a few things that, um, that I have. Oh, another thing that I would love to do is to walk into a car dealership and pay cash for a vehicle. So that's kind of part of our debt-free journey. I feel like, you know, you always see people on social media super excited to get a new car, but for whatever reason, just on this debt-free journey, when we've had to get new vehicles in the last few years, I don't get super excited anymore. I'm like, God, that's another payment. Like, are you kidding me? So I would love to walk into a dealership and be weird and pay cash for a vehicle and not have to owe a dang thing, right? That's my goal. So 
Um, yeah, these are just some of the things. Uh, what you focus on grows. I want to connect with new people. Um, I want to surround myself all the time with positive, optimistic people who are moving forward in life, um, who are not stuck in, in negative situations. So everybody goes through hard times, okay? Everybody at some point in their life does, but it's how are you pulling yourself out of that? And so if you're in a tough spot, like surround yourself with people who are doing better than you, who are optimistic, who are all about solutions and not about drama and not about negativity. So some of you for 2018, you're just going to have to um, do an inventory of the people that you're surrounding yourself with. Some of them are family members. you got to love them, but you might have to distance those people while you're getting out of a situation. Um, I will say this. Don't take money advice from broke people. Um, and same thing goes for your career, um, whether it's your education, whatever situation you're in. Always take advice from people who have done what you want to do or are doing what you want to do and are successful at it. Um, don't take advice from people who have never done it. So that was like a huge thing for us when we started our network marketing business um, about three years ago. We didn't really get serious, I would say, until about a year ago. But there were a lot of people in my life when I first started that were like, that will never work. Um, those things are pyramid schemes, blah, blah, blah. And it was from people that had never done it, that had never built what what I what I had seen other people build, right? And so whatever it is you're working for, like just take advice from the people who are in the trenches, who have done the work, whether it's fitness business, whether it's um, getting debt free, always take advice or have role models um, from those who have done what you wanna do. So that's what I would tell you, but hopefully this will give you um, some inspiration for your own vision board. I set it right over here um, in front of me against the wall. So when I sit at my desk every day, I see it and I'm reminded. Um, another cool thing to do that I talked about a few weeks ago is to do like little flashcards. And you could even do it, this is like a sticky note, but you could even um, do it on something similar to this, but like a note card, or you could do something just like this little, I guess you could do it on this, but have it by your bed. Have your affirmations, um, your goals by your bed and look at it. This Instagram thing is irritating me. Okay, it's giving me pop-ups. Um, but have it by your bed and look at it every day and say, all right, I need to refocus on this. I didn't do that this week. I need to refocus. But keep them in front of you. So whether it's a vision board or this, I like the vision boards. Um, something else I will share with y'all that's really cool, my husband brings it up all the time, is that I think it was 2012 I was on the cover of Oxygen Magazine. But like in 2010 or 2011, I can't remember which year it was, my husband made me a mock Oxygen Magazine cover. He put, um, it was a picture of me from my first uh, fitness competition. He put that photo and he made up a an Oxygen Magazine cover of my own. Um, he did, I think he did it in PowerPoint, but he made it for me. He put all the little words on the screen, like it looked like a cover. I still have it framed. And it's visualizing where you wanna be, and that was my goal. Like I thought, man, if I were on the cover of Oxygen, I would feel so incredible. I would feel like such a success because I was able to reach so many people with my weight loss story and and to show them like anything's possible. Um, I would I would think to myself, wow, I really made it. Like here I came from a place like the lowest of the low, 50 pounds overweight, didn't even want to like be really out with my friends, didn't want to be in any photos, much less ever put a swimsuit on in public to I'm on the cover of an international fitness magazine in like fitness attire and everybody can see it. And I mean, that's a complete transformation. And I would just, I would think, wow, like I really made it at that point. 
And so Kent made me this mock oxygen cover and I had it in my workout room. So any day that I would get up and do AM cardio, basically I would see that picture every day. And so when it came time um, and I was in great shape and I just was really ready to invest in a photo shoot for my brand, I actually hired the photographer at the time who was shooting for Oxygen Magazine, the chief photogra photographer, Paul Bustetta. And I remember hiring him, it was like at a fitness expo, I had my own photo shoot with him and I just remember going in there, Paul, if you watch this, you know, you probably, maybe you remember, but I was such a nerd, y'all. I told them, it is a career goal to shoot with you. Like, it, I didn't even believe, like, I was worthy to shoot with him. Like, he was the top of the top with photographers in fitness. And um, he was like, oh, my gosh, you know, and he's so humble. He was like, thank you so much. Like, what are your goals with fitness? And I was like, I want to be, I want to shoot for Oxygen Magazine. Like, that is my career goal. And he introduced me to the whole staff of Oxygen. Like, he was super kind. I just, I felt like, you know, I just felt like um, a dream come true, right? But they didn't have to call me to come shoot with them, but they did. So I just say, like, if you have a goal, whatever it is, have an affirmation in place, make your mock whatever. If you have the vision of being an author, make up a mock book and put it on your wall. Like, Whatever that is, like envision yourself in that place and think in your mind, like, how will I feel once I accomplish that? Maybe it's earning your college degree, going back to school. Maybe it's um, achieving a fitness goal or running a marathon. Like, how will you feel? Close your eyes and imagine how you will feel once you've actually accomplished it and go there, go there every day, go to that place in your mind. And if you put it out there in the universe and it's meant to happen for you, it will happen. And and that's what I love about this book I'm reading, Think and Grow, Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. He's talking about you can literally think yourself into success. Um, you just have to envision it, have that affirmation in place. Anyways, I love it. So I just wanted to share that with y'all because that is something that is the power of a vision board or having that vision for yourself and having it in front of you daily and thinking about it, but not only thinking, like actually taking action steps every day to put yourself in the position to accomplish that goal. Don't make it a dream, make it a goal and give it a deadline and crush it. So, all right, well have a wonderful day. I hope this inspires you to make a vision board. Um, and then track your, I would also say track your goals in a planner. I have a planner that I love. Um, everything is here. I write it all down. I'm not a phone app girl. I'm a pencil paper girl. Write it down. I have to like track everything. So, all right. That's it. That's all I got for you. Have a wonderful day. And I'll talk to you all soon. Bye.